Okay, I'm going to go ahead and cover um, 11.6 in this video. Um, before I do, I wanted to talk about um, all those formulas that were in the slides, okay? I've tried to um, put them all on one sheet here for you guys, um, as well as um, try to summarize a little bit so that they can make a little bit of sense. Um, so let me move this over so I can get this in there correctly. So I'm gonna just briefly go over the information that I summarized. So spheres will have equations that look very similar to this, where you have x minus an x coordinate squared plus y minus a coordinate squared plus z minus a coordinate squared equal to r squared. Without this, it looks very similar to the equation of a circle. But since we're in three-dimensional space, you add in this term, and now you have a three-dimensional circle, which is called a sphere, right? Um, basically, a circle that rotates all the way around in every which way. Okay. Planes, we just learned in the last section, they can be written like this, or you can move that term over, and then depending on if D is minus or positive or negative, it'll be plus or minus, right? Um, but it could be equal to zero. So the new stuff is the cylindrical surfaces, which they give you this form. And I want you to understand that it's a cylinder, this top one, and the top one is a cylinder that, um, Basically, you have a circle on the x, y axes because those are the variables there, and then it rises up. Okay, and so you get your cylinder going this way. And because this is behind the image or on the other side, usually we use dotted lines to symbolize that we can't really see that part of the the shape. Okay, um, and I've tried my best to use dotted lines in here, but it's kind of difficult. It's such a small graph. Okay. I'm not the best <laughs> at drawing these things in three dimensions, so bear with me, um, but I will try to explain everything, okay? Now, that's not the only form of the cylindrical services that you could have. You could also have x squared and z squared equal to a squared, and then in that case, the cylinder would be like lying down on the table, right, and it'd be going this way. Um, or you could have one that's like this, y, z plus z, uh, y squared plus z squared equals a squared. And then in that case, it would the cylinder would be going this way around the x axis. Okay. So it tells you if it's like this, it rises along this. Okay. And what that means is that the center of the surface is along that z axis. Okay. The center of this surface is along the y axis. And the center of this surface is along the x axis. Okay. Now, for quadratic surfaces, those are surfaces that have coefficients for all these variables. Some variables may be missing. It just means the coefficients are zero, right? Um, but you should be able to manipulate the equation so that they have one of the forms that we're about to talk about, okay? If you can factor everything and you get it in terms of this, now, all of these are centered at the origin. So keep in mind, eventually when we keep moving forward, we might not be centered at the origin. So you might see like x minus x naught in here within the square and y minus y naught in the square, right? And then z minus z naught in the square, okay? So they can get a little bit more complicated looking. Um, but what's important to notice is that all of these terms are positive. And notice that over here, the constant is a one on the right-hand side, okay? So anything that has all three terms, variable squared, um, and all the terms are positive, and you have one on the on the right hand side. Those will be ellipsoids, okay? And ellipsoids do look like an egg. So these measurements, the a, the b, and the c, will tell you how far wide the egg is along the x-axis, how wide the egg is on the y-axis, and how wide the x is on the z-axis. Okay? So those shape those numbers do help us to figure out whether the egg is like elongated this way along the z-axis, if it's elongated, um, I don't know, this way along the y-axis, and then if it's elongated this way along the x-axis, okay? So it just depends on which of those variables is bigger, okay? The next one is the hyperboloid by one sheet. This one kind of looks like a cylinder, but it kind of gets a little thin in the, in the middle somewhere, okay? And in, in one specific area in the middle, it'll get um, thin on the sides. So notice the equation and the similarity to the ellipsoid. 
okay? In this equation, you have two terms that are positive, but you have one that is negative, okay? And that term that is negative tells us which axis the center of the cylindrical type um, of shape where it is, okay? So for this one, notice that Z is a negative term. And so then it's going up along the Z axis, see? So the center of this cylinder that gets skinny on the sides um, is along that Z axis, okay? And again, notice that there's a one on this side. It will come in handy um, whether it's a one or a zero as well, okay? Um, then we have, um, dum, 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 dum. yes, I just wanna make sure I got them all because I want to be good. Okay, good. So then now we move on to the hyperboloid by one sheet, okay? And notice in this one, you have two terms that are negative and only one that's positive. So it's kind of the opposite of this, okay? When you have two terms that negative that are negative, the positive term, there's only one positive term on the left and one and the number one on the right. That one positive term tells you the axes, the center of the cone-like shapes are. So when you're doing a, a hyperbola by one sheet, what's happening is that, um, oh, I'm sorry, this is by two sheets, not one sheet. I already did one sheet. This one's by two sheets. Um, when you have a hyperbola by two sheets, what happens is, is you end up getting like this dome-like shape here and a dome-like shape up there, okay? And the center of both of those domes is um, whatever axis is positive. So in this case, notice that the Z is positive, right? So the center of these domes is on the Z axis, okay? Whereas if the X squared was the one that was positive and Z squared was negative, then the domes would be along the X axis, okay? And if Y, meaning there'd be one dome over here and another dome over here, okay? And if Y was the only one positive, similarly along the Y axis, you'd have one dome here and then one dome going that way, okay? They're not exactly a cone because cones are usually pretty pointy. Um, it does round out at the end, okay? Um, so then the next one is the elliptical coin, cone. And the elliptical cone literally looks like two cones that are touching each other, one upside down and one right side up, right? Now notice in this form that you only have one of them negative, kind of like the hyperbola, hyperboloid of one sheet, but notice that it's equal to zero, okay? So that's the big significant difference there. They're very similar, but one of them has a one here and the other one has a zero, okay? And in this case, the one, the one term that is negative tells us the center of those two cones that are touching. Okay. Now here we've got some more cylindrical surfaces. So um, let me move this over because little camera might be in the way. There we go, I'll move it down. Um, there's two more kinds and I'm gonna keep using these sheets because we need to refer back to them as we go along in homework, okay? Um, the elliptic paraboloid, okay? It looks like a parabola, but in 3D. So it looks like a really big cone. Um, I'm up not a cone, like a dome, <laughs> an upside down um, dome there. Um, I don't know what has that shape. Like maybe the, if you ever gotten water from the water fountain with those little wax cups, <laughs> those little wax cups are elliptical paraboloids, okay? Um, so what we have here is notice that in this equation, you have one variable that is not squared right? Um, and so that one variable that's not squared, that is the axis of the center, okay, of the paraboloid. So if for some reason I had x squared here and then y squared and z squared, then that means that along the x axis would be this dome, and it usually goes toward the positive. So it would be like this and then the little, the little circle there. And if you had y here and then x squared plus z squared, the little thing would be along the y, positive y axis, and it'd be like that, right? Um, so then we finally, the last shape we have is the hyper, hyperbolic paraboloid. Now this one's the, the hardest one to draw. Um, and luckily these, uh, these uh, 
problems are multiple choice, right? Because <laughs> they're very difficult to draw. So this one, um, you still have one variable that's not squared, but notice that one of your terms is going to be minus, okay? Um, and the best way I could describe what's going on there is that this looks like a saddle, like on a horse, right? Um, and when you lay that saddle on the horse, the axes, one of the axes is going to act like the horse, okay? What you're laying the saddle on top of. And so in this instance, I know my lines are crooked. I mean, I wish I really, really would have drawn this better, but I cannot draw in 3D. I try. <laughs> but essentially you have this Y axis here and then the saddle is straddling that Y axis, okay? And that's because the Y variable is the only positive squared variable, okay? So I should say positive squared term because this one's positive as well, right? But it's the positive squared term that I'm looking at. So the positive squared term tells us which axis is being saddled, okay? So that's the way um, I look at these so that I can determine what the graph is going to look like, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and go through the homework. Some of the problems will need to be manipulated and some of them already look like one of the forms of the equations, okay? So let's go ahead and look at the first problem. So for number one, um, and this is 11.6, we have x squared over nine plus y squared over 16 plus z squared over nine equal to one. Okay, now in there, I noticed that all of them are positive and I have that one on the right-hand side. If you remember here, the only one that fits that description is the ellipsoid that has all positive and a one, okay? So I know that this is going to be an ellipsoid, okay? And then what happens, which means it looks like an egg, right? I know for a fact that that's going to be this option here because it's the only graph that looks like an egg, okay? But let's say for some reason there was more than one graph that looked like an egg, right? How would you know which one was the correct one, okay? Um, I'm going to zoom in here a little bit so that you can see what I'm talking about. Um, but notice nine is three squared. So it should be coming out from the x-axis three units. Okay, and then you see this band here. So it's going out only three units in the x coordinate on the x axis. Um, and then for the y squared, it should, that's four squared. So it should be going out one, two, three, four on the y axis. And then again, you have that part, that um, the circle that goes around this way. Um, or it's not a circle, it's an ellipse. And, cannot say the word ellipse. <laughs> now z has also a factor down here of three squared. So that means it would go up one, two, three units in z. And so it is a little bit longer. Notice it's a perfect square on the x, z axis because this uh, is three squared and so is this. Um, so the radius there in both of those directions is three, but it is an egg longer on the y axis. Okay, so it's like the egg is on the table, but at an angle where the longer side is along the y-axis. Okay, so let me go back to my regular zoom and let's get back to the problems. Okay, so now number two, number two does not look like any of the graphs that we have so far. So for number two, we actually have to manipulate this equation in order for it to look like one of our graphs, okay? Um, one of the things I notice is that if there is a constant here, it should be positive one, okay? Um, so because it's not positive one, I'm gonna have to divide everybody by negative four so that I can get positive one. 
And so if I divide everybody by negative four, we end up with um, negative 15 over four times x squared. This would be a positive y squared, a negative 15 over four z squared, and then that positive one that I, that I need, okay? Now you may be asking yourself, well, I'm supposed to have this, right? I mean, the signs are the signs, but I'm supposed to have a number underneath for all of them. For here, it's just one because there was no number, right? But for here, you can write the reciprocal of this, which would be four over 15. And the same thing there, the reciprocal of that is four over 15, okay? And so what do I have here? I do have one of the cases, but notice I only have one positive squared term. So let's go look at our sheet. And I do see one here that's got two negatives and a positive, right? Now the variable that's our negative or positive is not going to outrule it from being a, hyper a hyperbola by two sheets. It is a hyperbola by two sheets if you've got two negative squares. It's just the positive square is what tells you which axes the little domes are gonna go across, okay? And so since my positive squared variable is y squared, that means that my domes are gonna be along the y axis which does match one of these graphs, it matches this one here. Notice that the dome here, um, it's like a cone-like shape. It's along that y-axis. The center of it is along this y-axis. So it will be this shape here. But again, that couldn't be determined until we had it in that proper form, okay? So we did have to manipulate that one just a little bit, okay? Now I'm gonna go on to number three. Keep that sheet with me because it comes in handy. Um, here we have y squared equals four x squared plus nine z squared. Now notice I do have a squared term, but it's on the wrong side, okay? I need them all on the same side. So I am gonna move that over there, but when I do, I'm actually gonna switch the sides of the equation. So instead of having zero over here on the left, I'm going to write zero over here on the right. Now, it doesn't make a difference, right? Whether I have this or I have this. It's the same equation, right? It just depends on what side of the room you are when you're looking at the balance beam, right? Are you in the front of the balance beam looking at it or are you behind the balance beam looking at it? Because depending on where you're standing, the left side might look like the right side and the right side might look like the left side, but both sides are equal, right? Because the balance beam is balanced. So those are the same equation. I just want it to be on the right because I noticed on all my equations, the zero is on the right. So notice you have two positives and a negative. I do have two positives and a negative. There is an issue though. I should not have coefficients in the front, okay? <laughs> So remember what I told you, there's a quick way to do this. Um, and all we have to do is um, if we divide by the common denominator here, it won't change this value, okay? So the common denominator here is 36. So I'm gonna divide everybody by 36. Only because it doesn't change the zero. I didn't do that up here. I didn't divide everybody by, um, by 60 up here, because I knew that this needed to be a one. And if I divide by 60, I'm not gonna get that one, okay? But here we have a zero, so we can divide by whatever we want. When I do that, this will reduce with a nine down here. This will now have a 36 down here. Then Z squared will now have a four downstairs and zero divided by anything is still zero. So I do still have two positives and one negative with the zero. So that means it's going to be an elliptic cone, but the positive, or I'm sorry, the negative axis tells us the center touching the cone-like shape, with the touching cone-like shapes. So what that means is that if, here's my y-axis, that those cones should be going in this direction, okay? 
So it should be going in that direction. And then I guess it's like a dotted line in the back. Um, but And that actually fits this one, okay? I don't think I wrote it up here, but this one should have been, um, we had what, a one and two negatives? So that one should have been a hyperboloid. I wouldn't have known up there. I knew over here, this was a hyperboloid by two sheets. And then center, the center of domes along Y axis. And so then this elliptical cone had a center of cones along the y axis again. It just so happens to be the y axis again. Okay, and it's just coincidence. So let's go ahead and move on to number four. I'll leave my paper there and move on to number four. Okay. So number four, we've got four x squared minus y squared plus four z equal to zero. So in this case, um, right? In this case, we do have a variable that is not squared. So I definitely want to solve for this variable. So the first thing I'm gonna do is minus four z on both sides, and then I'm gonna flip this equation. So I have negative 4z equal to 4x squared minus y squared. So that's on this side, but I just switched the equation over, right? Okay, so once we're here, we're gonna get z all by itself. So I'm gonna divide everybody by negative four. So I get negative x squared and I get positive y squared over four. You could put over one if you want, just so that they're both fractions. Now that does fit one of my formulas here. It actually fits not the elliptic paraboloid because that one has both positive. It actually fits the hyper hyperbolic paraboloid, okay, which has the minus in it. Um, so I don't, <laughs> this reminds me of, um, this is supposed to look like a saddle. Now, depending on how low this goes, it could look more like this image over here on the left, right? Depending on how high this goes. And if you look at it, it almost looks like a Pringles chip. Um, and if you, I don't know if you've seen the, the, not the newest Ghostbusters because that one's different, but the other Ghostbusters, which was like the first one with the female uh, Ghostbusters, the girl says in there something about a salty parabolo paraboloid. It's actually, <laughs> it should be a hyperbolic paraboloid, not just a paraboloid, okay? Because, so that was interesting. You, the more you learn about math, the more you realize how many math references are incorrect in the movies that you watch. It's kind of weird. Kind of ruins a little bit of the fun too, so <laughs> sorry. Um, so this one is definitely going to be a hyperbolic paraboloid, okay? Hi. Parabolic paraboloid. And I can go on about movie references being incorrect. I mean, there's just gobs of them. Um, sometimes they write gibberish, like the variables they're using don't even belong together. It's so funny. Um, anyway, dun, dun, dun. so this one should look like that Pringles chip or like that saddle. And notice here that the, look what it says here. It says the positive squared term tells us which axis is being saddled. So in this case, I have a positive y squared, which means the y axis should be the axis that's being straddled. And that's the exact one right here. Notice that it's going around this y axis, okay? It's like the horse is the y axis and you place that saddle on top of the y axis, okay? Um, so let me select that one there. Now we can move on to number five. So we have x squared plus y squared over four 
plus z squared equals one. So they want us to tell us what kind it is, which I've been doing, right? So that's nothing um, different from what we've been doing and then try to graph it. It's just that some of these graphs may look similar, um, but they should not be the same thing, okay? So here I do have it equal to one already, and I do have all positives. If you wanna put these over one, that's totally okay. But if we're all positive, it should be an ellipsoid, which is an egg shape, okay? Um, and so I think there's only one egg here. And again, notice that the Y is longer because that, that uh, I guess that radius is longer for the Y axis, okay? Now, six is 16X squared minus Y squared plus 16Z squared equal to four. Remember this does need to be a one because it's not missing. So it does need to be a one. So I'm gonna divide everybody by four. And I get four X squared minus Y squared over four plus Z squared, oh, nope, plus four Z squared equal to one. And again, if you want to have fractions, right, you can write this as X squared over one fourth. This is four and then z squared over one fourth because the reciprocal of four is one fourth. Okay, so now we've got two positive squares and a negative square. And I think that one is the hyperbola by one sheet. You've got two positives and one negative. Now that one looks like a cylinder that gets skinny in the, in the middle somewhere, okay? And the negative axis is tells us the center of that cylinder. So here, the negative is y squared. So that means my cylinder is gonna be around um, the y axis, okay? Which does match this image here, okay? So remember it's called a hyperboloid by one sheet. Those look like the cylinder that gets skinny in the middle, okay? Um, one sheet, and it looks like this one along the y-axis. Okay, number seven, four x squared minus y squared minus z squared equals one. So this one already has the one. So I just need to write this as a one fourth. And put ones. And so we've got two negatives, which means it's gonna be the hyperboloid by two sheets. And those are the ones that look like the little domes, okay? And so how do we know what's the center of axes for those domes? It's always going to be your positive axes, okay? So this is the positive squared term, is the x squared. So then my domes should be along the x axes, okay? And if you notice here, the dome is along the x axes, okay? It's going in this direction and you've got one dome and another dome. It's not the same as this one. This is an elliptical cone. Notice that the two types of the cones are touching versus here, they're not specifically pointy. They're more rounded and they are not touching, okay? So there's a difference between the elliptical cone, which is this one, and then the elliptical, or I'm sorry, the hyperboloid of two sheets. So be very, very careful there. Now, number eight, this one's pretty easy. I think I can fit it in this small space. I am gonna add Y to both sides and then flip my equation over so that I have the positive Y here and then the X squared plus Z squared over here. And that does fit one of our uh, formulas. Oops, I forgot to push something. That does fit one of our formulas when one of the variables is not squared. And um, that is, I have a plus. So if I have a plus, that's supposed to be an elliptic parabola with the center being around the y-axis. So it's going to look like a, like one of those little wax cups, right? From the water machines. Um, 
usually like at the doctor's office they have those little cones um so it's going to be elliptical paraboloid and it's going to look like this but notice that it's on the y-axis because of this variable not being squared okay okay now let's try number nine so we have x squared minus y squared plus z equals zero so i am gonna minus z over but when i do i'm gonna have negative z x squared minus y squared so i am gonna have to divide by that negative coefficient and i get negative x squared and positive y squared so I do have one negative, which means it is not the paraboloid, it's, or it's not the elliptic paraboloid, it's the hyperbolic paraboloid. Remember, it's the Pringles chip, right? Or the saddle, okay? And the variable that is not being squared at all, okay? No, I'm sorry, I'm lying to you. Notice what I have here. It says the positive squared term tells you which axis is being saddled. So this is my positive squared axis. So this, my positive y squared term. So the y axis is being saddled. And I believe hyperbolic paraboloid, that is this one. See how it goes around that y axis, okay? Okay, number 10, we have z squared equals x squared plus y squared. And this one, they're all squared, so I'm gonna get it, move the z squared over. So I have zero equals x squared plus y squared over nine minus z squared. So one, notice that I have it equal to zero. And two, you have two positives and one negative. That actually fits the description, two positives, one negative, and a zero of the elliptic cone. What does that one look like? That's the one that looks like two cones touching each other upside down or side by side, right? But the two tips of the cones are what are touching, okay? And where is the center of that? It's going to be on the negative term. So that means that in this case, we're gonna have the things going like this and then one going downward. Um, I'm trying to draw it, but you get the, you got like an hourglass standing on a table, right? Um, it should be this image here and it's an elliptic cone. And that's the end of this assignment. So really it was about manipulating those equations to make them match those particular forms and then understanding what that basic shape will look like and if it's going to be like rotated so that it's around the, the center is on the X axis or the center is on the Y axis or the center is on the Z axis, okay? Um, but I tried to put those notes on here so you would know exactly where to look um, to find out if it's gonna be centered around something different, okay? So let me leave this on here just in case someone wants to pause the video and, um, so that's the first one with just this information and the ellipsoid. You can pause it so you can write all that down with my little notes. And then here you have um, for the hyperboloid with one sheet all the way down to the elliptic cone. Pause the video so you can type all of that in. And then the more quadratic spaces where we have um, elliptic paraboloids and then the hyperbolic paraboloid. Okay. And then make sure you pay attention to those notes. They definitely help you to decide the center of everything. Um, other than that, that is the end of this section. Um, I will continue recording so that I can get to the next section. See you soon.